I'm Dylan. And I'm Keon. And this is Trust Your Doctor, that podcast with a seizure-inducing title sequence. Yep. That's the war games. I, I mean, I guess. <laughs> if you wanted to, like, boil it down to the most <laughs> no, not rudimentary even, but... level. <laughs> that doesn't even describe the scene. <laughs> um... No, but I actually had to look away from the screen during this title sequence because it was just flashing lights all over the place. It was explosions and, and war and yeah, but they didn't need to. They didn't need to do that. You know, yes, they did. Yeah, they really needed to give people seizures before watching the show. You know that super famous episode of Pokemon that gives that gives you uh, seizures or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised that that whole fiasco didn't start. Uh, 40 years earlier with this. Well, maybe because this was in black and white, so it was a lot harder to induce a seizure when it was just like a flashing white light instead of multicolored <laughs> random strobe effect. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, did it not hurt your eyes when you were watching this title sequence? No, I only watched it for episodes one and like four. Oh. Because usually when I'm about to watch the episode, I just I play it in the background so it gets past the title sequence because I, uh, I don't feel like watching the title sequence every time, oh, like right. regardless of the serial. Yeah, I usually forget I'm the only person who watches all opening and ending credits of all shows and movies that I watch. Yeah, I do that. I don't know if I've mentioned it on the show before, but yes, I do. I, I've started sitting through the credits now, even though I don't watch them just because I like listening to the song. <laughs> so... <laughs> all right. <laughs> um... But yeah, that's the war games. Uh, we both had seizures, so we don't what? really know what happened. No, no, no. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, um, no, we do know what happened, obviously. No, yeah, we wouldn't be doing a podcast on it. <laughs> and now we're just going to segue into the introduction, which it actually starts with the doctor. For, for once, yeah. yeah. For once. Um, uh, they arrive in some sort of battlefield, and... Yeah. Bombs going off. Yeah, and they find out they're in no man's land. <laughs> <laughs> so they get picked up by a nurse. Somehow they don't just immediately die right then and there. Um, but yeah, they get picked up by um, Jennifer, I think her name was. or uh, yeah, was, uh, yeah, Lady Jennifer. Yeah, Lady Jennifer, right. Um, yeah, so uh, somehow, I, I don't know... Maybe I just don't know enough about, like, history slash World War I, but how was there an ambulance driving through no man's land? Isn't that, like, instant death? <laughs> Didn't she say later that she was, like, driving down a road and then she encountered the mist and then all of a sudden she was in no man's land? I don't know. Maybe. I, I, I guess. She was from that time, though, which that, that would imply that she'd gone to another time period. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was kind of another time period because it wasn't the, wasn't Earth, it was somewhere else. Oh, so you're saying that the mist transported her there? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Um, <clears throat> yeah, all right, that makes sense. Yeah, we kind of just spoiled the, the main <laughs> reveal of this, but uh. Well, I mean, only the first five episodes because we don't know the rest five. Yeah. Oh, right. We should probably mention before we really jump into things, even though we already have, uh, that. Uh, since this episode, since this serial was 10 episodes, we decided to split it up into five and five. five. Yeah. Uh, mainly cause we mentioned this last week too, mainly cause, <clears throat> uh, the doctor regenerates the serial. Yes. This is the spoiler. last, this is the last second doctor serial. It's not, it's not, I guess it's a spoiler if you're literally <laughs> watching these blind and not knowing anything, <laughs> which I don't know. <laughs> like I've said before, I don't know how that would even be possible, but, um, you live in a log cabin in, like, Alaska or something. You still need the internet to find out what this show is. Do you? Maybe some wandering traveler <laughs> came through and was like, have you heard of the show called Doc Who? It's pretty good. <laughs> you should watch it from the beginning. And he's like, okay. And he didn't realize the traveler meant the beginning of the reboot, so he went back and watched all this black and white 1963 you still need era the, show. So you, you somehow use the internet to watch... To, Find Doctor Who and watch the episodes without knowing anything else about the show. No, he did a write-in order form <laughs> to the BBC and has it mailed to him every month. Oh. I don't know. Oh, right. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um. So yeah, they're uh, they're in they're in World War One era. Um. 
yeah, at this point I was like, hey, I didn't know they were going to go for another historical serial. But uh, I was pretty open to this. It wasn't like, uh, not another historical serial. They just kind of threw all the historical serials into one and hoped oh, something didn't... stuck. <laughs> we didn't find that out until uh, later. Because the, the first episode was just uh, just made it seem like it would just be World War One. Um, yeah. And I thought it would be. But uh, little did I know. <laughs> you think they could pull ten episodes out of World War One without somebody dying... One of the companion crew dying. <clears throat> well, we'll get into that later. Uh, <laughs> Semi spoiler again, um, but right, uh, they uh, so Lady Jennifer uh, is trying to take the Doctor, Jamie, and Zoe back to uh, the English trenches, but they're intercepted by some Germans, uh, but then rescued by another uh, Google English Google. vehicle. Yeah. Um, led by Lieutenant, he's a Lieutenant, right? Yep. Lieutenant, uh... Carstairs. 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 It's pronounced Casters, right? I thought it was Carst- Carstairs. Carstairs? Car- I don't know! I, yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> uh, Carstairs. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you spell it, anyway. Uh... <clears throat> so they take him to base where General Smythe is in command, and he just is like, nope, you, these people, we're going to put them on trial. And then they do. For being spies. Um, yeah. Well, they, th- they think uh, the Doctor and Zoe are spies, and they think Jamie is a deserter. From the Highland <laughs> Regiment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the Doctor, Jamie, and Zoe try uh, to explain the situation, but Smythe is like, nope, nope, you're getting court-martialed. And that's happening now. So, yeah. uh, so and let's do that. <laughs> the most one-sided trial in history, because General Smythe just mind controls his two cohorts, uh, the, um, the, and it, the, uh, the Ransom and, yeah. uh, some, Major, some other Major guy. Major Bangton. Right. So, yeah, it turns out General Smythe has, uh, mind control powers. In his uh, spectacles, though. Only right. when he's wearing his spectacles. Right, and they, uh... They are definitely too small for his face. Oh, those are the bit glasses <laughs> yes. we were talking about. I thought you meant the the, the paper no. goggle things. Okay, never mind then. Yeah, you're right. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so it turns out he's a Jedi, and he can... What? Yeah, because he, uh, he uses the Jedi mind trick. He's He says, uh... He he goes to his uh to ransom and uh, Barrington. And he's like these people are spies, and they're like yeah, these people are Star spies. Star Wars doesn't even exist yet. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <sighs> he's still a Jedi. Wow. But um but yeah they um yeah they get put on trial. They decide the Doctor's gonna be shot. And Zoe's gonna be thrown in prison, and Jamie's gonna be also thrown in prison. I think Zoe's gonna be like forced to join some other thing. Yeah, she's. But the doctor's going to be like, shot, and that's yeah. the most important thing. Yeah. Uh, I also wanted to mention that uh, they really blatantly telegraphed the fact that these glasses are what gives him his mind control powers, because every time he would put them on, uh, they would play this sound effect slash music cue thing, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then he would mind blatantly mind control someone, and they, they could have been a little more subtle with that, in my opinion. You still would have figured it out after a few times of him putting on the glasses. Maybe they're going to like try to build suspense with it. Like, why is he mind controlling them rather than he's mind controlling them? Yeah, I still think he's mind controlling them would have been better. Because cause you wouldn't have figured if they didn't do the whole music cue, you probably wouldn't have figured it out until at least the second time he did it. I guess. That, well, you at least you, you might have known he was mind controlling the person because they repeated it after him, but you probably wouldn't have known that it was the glasses doing it until you saw him put them on again and. I don't know if that would have made the serial better because there's already so many things you have to follow for the serial to make sense. Like, this serial is probably one of the most complicated ones so far because of, there's so many plot threads that get played out, played out, at least in these five, because they split up, like, twice, and you have to follow both of them twice, I, I and that's guess. just in five episodes! I guess. It wasn't as complicated as some other serials, like, <clears throat> uh, oh, Massacre, obviously, but that was just all political mumbo-jumbo. Um, and yeah, that actually, that's actually gonna, that's actually something I want to talk about, uh, later. Um, mm-hmm. cause, I, um, last week I said that, um, I wanted to think about 
more uh, a more in-depth look at you know what makes a good or bad cereal so i kind of did think about that and i, I wrote some stuff down that i think is probably more in-depth than what we had before but we'll get into that um but yeah the doctor sentenced to death um like we were saying it's and put in f- by firing squad yeah. <laughs> uh so sometime during the night uh zoe is uh jamie's thrown in jail and so is the doctor but uh separate cells i guess no zoe's uh given the room to sleep in with uh lady jennifer i think or just like some room because remember she's yeah well i guess technically she's still in prison but she's not like prison prison yeah yeah okay yeah so so uh she tries to go rescue the doctor in the middle of the night and she almost succeeds but then uh ransom i think it is uh captures them (laughs) yeah and that, wow, that name. Well, I mean, now that, realize that what? his name is Ransom. Don't yeah. know what I thought it was before, but... <laughs> uh, all right. Um, yeah, that plot thread actually didn't need to be there. I just thought of that. The whole, let's rescue the doctor thing. Nope, he's going to not be rescued because we... I suck. guess it was to accelerate the firing squad because they weren't going to shoot him till dawn and then they just took him out immediately after they found him with Zoe. Which is basically dawn anyway, because... I guess, yeah. Yeah. Um... But maybe I, they wanted right. they wanted suspense to have Zoe see the doctor get shot. <laughs> I guess. So yeah, the doctor gets shot at the end of episode one. It uh, ends with a gunshot. And uh, in classic. episode two, he regenerates because he's dead now. No, the, no. the classic, hear a gunshot but don't see it and just assume they got shot. <laughs> no, no, whenever that happens, you can pretty much assume they didn't get shot. Well, at least in this show, in like almost any other show on television, they probably got shot. Well, I mean, it depends. You can't just make a blanket statement like, yeah, they got shot. I mean, it really it just it, it's situational. Like here, he doesn't get shot. Because it's actually a sniper shooting one of the people in the firing squad. <laughs> Did they ever go into who that sniper was? No, but I'm pretty sure like uh, one of the cabins came out and was like, what are you guys doing? This, we're being shot at. And they're like, whoa, what? something like that. Cause they don't. They didn't all just like run away when they heard the gunshot. Cause they all just assumed it was one of their own, wasn't it? Cause someone I guess. definitely someone came out and stopped them from killing the doctor. Remember that much? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so the doctor doesn't get killed. Right. He and Zoe uh, use this chance to escape, uh, and they need to go get Jamie, who's being held at some sort of other prison. Cause I think it was that uh, Zoe and the doctor were being held at uh, Smythe's base or whatever. And Jamie was sent somewhere else, I yeah, think. Yeah, deserted camp or something. Y- yeah. So meanwhile, with speaking of Jamie, uh, he has met another prisoner who happens to be a red coat. From 1745. Yeah, which is pretty shady and suspicious. Um, <laughs> and yeah, Jamie thinks so too. And he's like, well, what are you doing here? And they both find out. Well, first they... Like, start fighting, because he's like, oh god, a red coat, and the red coat's like, oh god, a Scott. So, uh, yeah, then they both realize they're out of their own time. Well, the red coat doesn't really realize it, but he just knows something weird is going down. Yeah, he just accepts it, I guess. Uh, he mentions that he walked through some mist and ended up in 1917. Obviously, he doesn't say he ended up in 1917, but... Yeah. But he just, he ends up there. So, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty suspicious. That's um, very suspicious. Yeah. I mean, actually, and we also <laughs> forgot to mention the, the part where uh, uh, where Carsters and um, Lady Jennifer were talking about the mist, too. Yeah, because they, they thought it was pretty shady, the whole court martial, that it wasn't really a court martial because General Smythe just mind-controlled the <laughs> other two into being like, yeah, he's guilty. <laughs> um, Even though the other two were like, yeah, I don't know, General. They don't seem like spies to me. <laughs> And he's like, they're spies. Um, but yeah, they think something's up with that, and they they both realize that they have memory loss, and uh, they both come to the conclusion that maybe it has something to do with the fog, that, because they both remember the, the fog. Uh, but they think it's um, some new type of chemical warfare. Pretty, yeah. uh, pretty good assumption, I guess. Yeah, uh, chemical warfare war was legal in <clears throat> the First World War, so... Yeah. So, uh... <clears throat> Yeah, that was that was a little bit earlier, but uh, but yeah, Jamie and the Redcoat 
uh, devise a plan to escape where they make it look like they're fighting. And when the guards come in to break it up, they knock out the guards and run. Mm-hmm. Um, but the red coat dies. He's shot as they're trying to escape. Um, yeah, and at this point, uh, the doctor and Zoe have arrived at the base, and they've somehow convinced the commander of that base that they're uh, the inspector. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> inspecting the the prison quality. Right. The the doctor just yells at him <laughs> into belief. He basically yells him into belief. Yeah, essentially. And hey, I mean. I've said this before. If you just pretend like you know what you're talking about, no one will realize you don't. Yeah. And I do this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I can confirm this. <clears throat> um, but, uh, yeah. So pretty soon, the, uh, the, the prison warden or commander guy is uh, meekly offering the doctor some tea while, while he offers to uh, show him around the... The premises. Right, and the, the doctor decides he won. Whatever. He hears that the two prisoners escaped and one of them got shot. <clears throat> and he's like, what? One of them got shot? And <laughs> they're like, yeah, the red coat. And he's like, oh, I, I want to see the Scotsman. I'd like to interview him about the prison quality. <laughs> and the guy's like, w- w- what, an interview? And the doctor says, no, no, just let me interview him. <laughs> it's like, okay, man, all right. <laughs> um, so they so, so do. Me, well, Jamie just... Bur- bursts in somehow, or no, 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 no. They actually do escort him. Yeah, they bring him, him in. They escort him in. Yeah. Um. And at first, <laughs> this was funny. He's like, "Doctor," and the doctor says, "You'll see to a doctor when you're ready." <laughs> Just prepared. <laughs> the doctor covering all his bases <laughs> doesn't really matter because they figure out he's not the inspector anyway. Eventually, somehow, I don't remember how. Um. Well, the, the, um, yeah, eventually the, the, the warden just starts thinking it's pretty suspicious. That he doesn't have his papers, so he decides oh, to, right, right. he decides to call, uh, General Smide, but then Zoe hits him over the head with a vase, so. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She says something like, it needed to be done. <laughs> and the doctor checks his pulse and like, ah, oh, he'll live. Uh, yeah, a few things I wanted to mention from before this, actually, uh, the, do- uh, the doctor and Zoe uh, convinced some driver they found on the road to to take them to the base in the first place. And I think this is the first time on the show we've seen the doctor drive. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it is. I, I don't know. Can you remember another instance where he might have done so? The only other time that I could think he might have driven was the invasion or the war, mi- uh, the war machines. Well, I don't think he did in the, uh, the invasion. At yeah, all. he got a taxi in uh, the war machines. I remember that now. Yeah, he might have driven in the invasion actually at the beginning with the. Uh, yeah. With the, with the car. <clears throat> yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't exactly really remember. remember. I think this is the first time we see him on screen driving, though, which I thought was pretty interesting. <laughs> Did he drive in the faceless ones? Like right at the very end when they were leaving. Oh yeah, maybe. Or did they yeah. just? No, I think he did. Because they were following the. No, no, they got a. They oh, yeah. uh, they got a cab or something. Right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how I remembered that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the first time we explicitly see him on screen driving, rather than it just being implied. Uh, so I don't know. I thought that was interesting. Maybe it's not. Uh, yeah. Well, having seen the first two episodes of the third Doctor's first serial, I'll tell you he drives again in the very next serial. So. <laughs> all right. That's not a spoiler at all. So. Um. Yeah, I also like his line. Mm. Let's see if we can bluff our way out of here. <laughs> um, I up made there a note. for one of my favorite lines um, we kind of forgot to mention this but General Smide went into his room and this like box materialized and oh, yeah. he left in it to go to get a central command or something which you don't find out till later but I made a note that the box sounded like the TARDIS yeah. so I was like hmm I wonder if there's going to be something with that that comes up later in the serial um, it sounded like the TARDIS without the eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> It was just the thing. It's <laughs> my best interpretation of it. Yeah, I guess. I kind of blanking on exactly how it sounded. Um. So yeah, where were we? So anyway, they they make their escape, 
back to the chateau, I guess. Where uh, They were in a chateau? Yeah, that's General Smythe's office was a chateau. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so they I, they go back there, right? Then they meet up yeah. with Lady Jennifer and Carstairs. Yeah. And convince... No, oh, because they get captured again. But then they convince Jennifer and Carstairs. Oh, right, because uh, Ransom randomly shows up at the prison. Yeah. And he's like, well, what do we have here? Because they realize the prisoners escaped, so... My right, they, they they call it reinforcements. <clears throat> it happens to be Ransom, and he realizes, hey, it's the guy who just escaped execution. <laughs> <laughs> Back from the dead, Doctor, I see. Uh... <laughs> So yeah, they bring them back to the chateau. <laughs> Apparently they're in a chateau. I find that funny for some reason. Um, uh, so yeah, they, uh, the doctor and um, and everyone else are left alone with uh, Carsters and Lady Jennifer. Mm-hmm. And they manage to convince them to uh, look uh, behind the portrait of whoever it was, some general, to find the control panel that Smythe was using before to operate the the machine he used. Right. Uh, which Zoe actually saw when she was snooping around trying to find the doctor late at night. I yeah. guess I guess that's why that plot thread needed to be there. Yeah. <laughs> All See, right. I told you there's lots of plot threads you need to follow in this story. <laughs> um, <laughs> Things you didn't think would play out, play out in the end. And and that kind of makes it good. But, uh, um, so yeah, they, they go into the... They sneak into Smythe's office, and they remove the portrait from the wall. Uh, and the Doctor, Jamie, and Zoe can see the control panel, but Carsters and Jennifer can't. Right. Uh, but they tell them <clears throat> to concentrate, and eventually they do see it. And they're like, well, what does this mean? And the Doctor says that something nefarious is afoot. Except he doesn't say nefarious. Cause... He says something's up. Or something like that. <laughs> yeah. But they end up like accidentally turning it on. They realize someone on the other side probably saw them, so now they're like, oh, shoot. And then we, this is the first time we see the central command thing, and we find out that Smythe uh, saw them and is now really pissed because, oh no, someone just found out. And uh, it turns out he's in league with some other people, and they're orchestrating the war. Yeah, he's in league with this bald guy, and they're making, like, battle plans, and you find out later, I think... At either at the end of episode two or the beginning of episode three, that the bald guy is the, the quote-unquote central command general guy for the Germans in 1917. As well yeah, as that was the, the end of two. As well as the commander for the Confederacy, which you'll find out in a second, <laughs> and we'll explain in a second because that doesn't make sense right now. <laughs> <clears throat> um, but and, yeah, so the doctor uh, realizes that someone might have seen them, so they need to escape, and... Uh, they convince, well, Carsters and Jennifer don't want to go along with them. They want to wait until someone in command comes back. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the doctor alerts them to the fact that they're in danger, too. So they all escape in an ambulance. Yeah, they pile into the ambulance and gun it for the border. Yep. Uh, and they get captured by Germans. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, they get taken to the German base. There, that was kind of a jarring cut, actually. I don't know if you were bothered by this, but... It doesn't show them getting captured by the Germans. It just cuts to it, and you find out through dialogue. But um, I don't know. It was a little jarring to me. There was a jarring cut later that I noted where they were like, "Well, we're gonna have to escape somehow." I mean, it just cuts to like another scene, that, and they just don't explain how they escape. And I was like, "Wow," or something like that. But I remember mm, making a note about that. Was that. when they escaped from the German camp, right? Yeah, I think so. They're like, I didn't find that one as jarring actually for some reason. I don't know. Anyway, so now they're in the camp, now they're in the German camp, and <laughs> and uh, they're being interrogated by this guy, uh, suspiciously similarly to when they got captured by the English. Yeah, so um, lots of weird parallels in this serial. Kind of makes sense when you find out what's all going on. Yeah. Um, so the German soldier wants to know where the doctor's from. He's interrogating them all separately, and he's mm. I guess he's going for the doctor first. So the doctor decides to tell him the full and honest truth that they're time dimension travelers. Oh, yeah, that was the cut that was jarring. Because he was like, well, you want the full truth? And then it cuts to, like, Jamie and Zoe, and they get handed a helmet. And then it cuts back, and the guy's like, so you travel oh. in a space-time machine. Wow. I'm going to bring in your friends to see if they tell the same story. And he does, and they do. Yeah. <laughs> and he still doesn't believe it, so the doctor pulls out the sonic screwdriver... And uh, he needs to unscrew something with it, so he uh, offers to do so on the soldier's gun. Um, so he does, 
And, uh, but then, uh, then the bald guy from Central Command comes in, and you find out that he's the German commander, so now something is really up. Yeah, and, and he pulls out a mind control monocle. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. tells the guy that they're just English spies and they should be shot. And, yeah, and then he goes back into another room, reports to Central Command that they're about to be shot. Um, and this is where the serial started getting really interesting to me, because at this point you can tell something, something's up, obviously. It, right. Uh, but you don't really know what, and um, it's silly to keep. It's not like an, a giant info dump like they sometimes do. We're like, okay, now you know what everything about what's happening, and the rest is just all how it plays out. Mm -hmm. But no, this is actually there's still more secrets to be revealed here, even though you you do know kind of what's happening. Obviously, there's there's some sort of league that's orchestrating things behind the scenes, but you don't really know how or why. And uh, I like that it's slowly revealed like this. And then when you get that big reveal at the end of episode four, I think it was, with the war chief. Yeah. Um, which we'll get to in a second. Um, and by a second, I probably mean like 15 minutes. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so yeah, the, the doctor somehow convinces the, uh, the soldier not to shoot them. Uh, and mm -hmm. because, because he, um, I think he alerts the soldier to the fact that something's probably missing from his memory. And then he shows him the sonic screwdriver thing again, and then he remembers everything, and then... He's like, what? How did I not remember that? But then the doctor, <laughs> while he's using the screwdriver, is able to uh, get hold of the gun, and he's like, well, now you're going to let us escape. <laughs> so they do, they just bolt, and they're driving, and they go through a mist. Right, they, they also pick up Carsters and... Right, uh, and they go through a mist, and... They wind up in ancient Rome. Being attacked by Romans. And then Vicky shows up. No. <laughs> <laughs> if only. <laughs> no, Vicky got dropped off in Greece anyway, wasn't it? Yeah, close enough. <laughs> <laughs> she was somewhere on Earth. She could have made it to ancient Rome. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, imagine how, uh, how interesting that would be if she actually showed up, though. Imagine if they were planning it all from season three or whenever. <laughs> They just hoped this show would keep getting renewed <laughs> so they could bring her back here. Wow. They should be like, you're not the doctor. <laughs> There'd be no way he could convince her he was, like, immediately, because he's got completely different companions to when he was traveling with Vicky. He looks completely different, and he doesn't have the TARDIS with him, because that's somewhere in No Man's Land in 1917. Yeah. You could just be like, hey, Vicky. I don't know. And she'd be like, who are you? <laughs> but, yeah, that doesn't happen, obviously. So... The Romans are charging, and they need to get the car started, but apparently it's a, a rotary engine, I guess. I think that's what that's called, where you have to crank the engine in the front of the car. Um, I don't know. Do you know what that is? I th Not I'm pretty sure it's a rotary engine. But um, but that's what they have to do. So they narrowly escape uh, the, uh, the Romans, mm -hmm. and they drive back through the mist. And the doctor realizes that the mist is what's connecting all these different time periods most likely and he also somehow figures out that um that i guess each mist leads to a different area and it's all connected mm -hmm. in some in some way so he wants a map and he figures the uh, best place he has a chance to get one is the chateau mm -hmm. so they head back there in secret i guess <laughs> it's pretty dangerous to go back there at this point um I mean, now that they've made an enemy of both the English and the Germans, they're pretty much no friendly uh, units on the field, so to speak. But um, well, except that guy is just completely oblivious to the fact that Carstairs is a is a wanted yeah, man. Yeah, that was Ransom, right? No, no, because they pull a gun on Ransom when they get back. There was that other guy. Oh yeah, that <laughs> random unnamed soldier. Um, yeah, so they get back, they pull the gun on Ransom, tie him up, and then the. They, they find this safe in Smythe's room, and they, I guess, deduce that the map is in there, or, or just guess, or something. <laughs> Imagine if it wasn't. No, uh, so And Jamie makes a, uh, a silly reference to the previous serial, where he's like, what, are you going to pick that lock with a tuning fork? Oh, right. <laughs> and he's like, no. <laughs> so they, divide, they uh, use, they, they devise some, some sort of device. Yeah, they devise a device. Great. They use, um, like, a grenade and take the explosives out and shove it in the lock of the yeah. safe. And then they un they unstring a candle wick and like make them use it create as a, a fuse. Yeah, they use it as a fuse. Um 
So the doctor and Jamie are looking after the fuse as it, um, as it goes off, I guess. And, uh, everyone else is in the front office on the lookout. So then this other soldier comes in and he's like, Hey, car stairs, sup? <laughs> so not like that, but... Uh, he wants to know he what's f- going no, on. He found Lady Jennifer and Zoe because they were guarding the ambulance outside. Oh, and right. he brings them in and they're like, hey, I found these outside. They're on the run. What should I do with them? And Carstairs is like, you just leave them with me. <laughs> Not suspicious at all, Carstairs. And Ransom somehow gets his mouth thing out and yells for help. And I made a note like, haha, I guess the doctor never taught Jamie to tie knots. If you remember back in Tomb of the Cybermen when he ties that knot around the thing and it fails and the doctor's like, Remind me to teach you how to tie a knot, Jamie. When was that? Way back in Tomb of the Cybermen. Yeah, but like when in Tomb of the Cybermen? Uh, when they got locked in the room with the rejuvenation machine, and they get the cyber controller guy into the machine, and then Jamie's supposed to tie it shut. Huh. And then I only he, vaguely remember that. And he does. <laughs> I only remember the fails. line. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so um. So the the guard hears the explosion. In the other room, and he's like, what? What is that? Uh, and he runs in and finds the doctor and Jamie, and he's like, car stairs, what's going on? And they knock him out. <laughs> yeah, they pull a gun on him, tie him up, and knock him out. <laughs> uh, so they have the map now, and the doctor was right. It does show how all the different time periods are connected. Apparently, um, the mist connects wars from different places and different periods on Earth. It connects World War I, uh... The American Civil War? Yeah. The uh, obviously Roman, the Rome, war. Some real war with the Romans. Uh, Something with redcoats involved. Yeah, with the Scots. Um, yeah. Hang so, on, before we continue, I want to make a note. Did you actually look at that time zone map? No. Did you? Okay. So I guess you didn't notice that all the time zones were triangles. No, oh, no, I noticed they were triangles. I didn't like pause and okay. like look in depth at it. But That's yeah. what I meant. So I was like, how are they all triangles? Like, how does that even make sense? Well. How, how do you have the two... Fronts of the of World War One in a triangle shape without there being weird endings for the trenches. Like there's no way you could organize the two trenches in a triangle shape without the without the borders being really weird. Well, I don't think it re- uh, that doesn't really play into it because the the mist obviously has weird effects on their memory and like sense of things. So like I f- I figure the uh, the mist would just be the the border. When they go through that, they wouldn't really remember where they are or anything. Well, they remembered when they went to the Roman time, so I don't think that counts. Yeah, but I, don't I think, think but I think it was, that was because Carstairs and uh, Jennifer were sort of deconditioned, as we find out later. I guess. <clears throat> sure. I still thought it was weird that all the shapes were triangles. That just didn't make sense to me. Why wouldn't you just use squares? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> so, oh, right, there's a there's a space in the middle of the map that's blank, and the doctor, uh, I guess, f- figures out that's probably where they need to go, and it is. Why did Smythe have a map anyway? He just used that TARDIS-like object to teleport to the main command anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Why does he have a map and a safe in his room? <laughs> I guess they just gloss over that and don't mention it. <laughs> Uh, um, but yeah, they they start heading towards the sector in the middle that's blank, and they uh, they soon head into the American Civil War sector mm-hmm. and are shot at by some soldiers. Yeah, I think at that point the Central Command had been like, capture them alive. Well, they or they do that when they find out that they're in the American Civil War zone. Right. Yeah, and you find out the Central Command is orchestrating all these wars for some evil purpose. And, the war um, chief. Yeah. Whose and, name you find out in, like, episode four, I think. Right. <clears throat> well, I mean, you don't find out his name, you just... You do. Its name is the war chief. It's, he doesn't have another name? It's not a title? It's, it's just like name. the doctor. Oh. Is he a recurring antagonist? I don't know. No, I don't think so. All right. But I've heard his name before. <laughs> oh, okay. It's the war chief. That's right. his name. All right. <laughs> um... That's pretty sure in the credits, it just credits him as War Chief, too. Or the War Chief. <clears throat> I think. Um. Anyway, so they're like, bring him alive. And so the, the ambulance ends up breaking down because they're out of fuel. Yeah, and they can't get any because they're in 18-whatever. Yeah, the Civil War. 
history. <laughs> when did it happen? <laughs> American Civil War was 1860s, I think. Yeah. Um, all anyway. those years in history in school just <laughs> didn't help me at all. But uh, yeah, so so yeah, they're 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 orchestrating it behind the scenes. But I also wanted to mention that like. Yeah, I guess actually, there's nothing nothing to mention there. They're, they're orchestrating things behind the scenes and uh, and and uh, playing to each mm-hmm. faction's not emotions, but just what they th- what their perception of reality to make them make right. them think they're still on Earth, which you don't find out they're not on Earth till later. But <laughs> whatever. Um, yeah, that <laughs> they end up in a barn. Yeah, um, they hide out in a barn uh, because they're. Uh, they get no. They didn't get sent to the barn. Captured. No, that Carstairs later. stayed back with the ambulance to give them time oh, right. to escape, and Carstairs yeah. ended up getting captured then. Yeah. And the rest of them, so Lady Jennifer and then the intrepid trio, um, head into the barn and like wait out. I guess the, uh, they for the were, night, something like that. Um, anyway, one of those weird TARDIS like machines materializes, and a bunch of soldiers walk out of it. And the Doctor and Zoe think this is pretty shady. So, so does Jamie. Well, they all do. Well, yeah. <laughs> Lady but Jennifer does too. The Doctor is the one who goes inside to investigate, and Zoe's the one who follows him when she realizes the door's about to close, and then Jamie and Jamie's Lady a... Jennifer hang out at the door as guards, I guess. Well, no, Jamie's about to follow them in, and then he realizes Lady Jennifer went out to see what the heck the soldiers were doing, so yeah, he follows her. Yeah, because there was a firefight outside, just yeah. gunshots going off. Yeah, so... So then he's about to follow the doctor, but ends up following Lady Jennifer, and that's how they get separated. And that's where episode three ends. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it actually four. ends with Jamie going like, oh no, in, in, in that exact tone of voice. Did you notice that? Like that one, that delivery of that one line by Fraser Hines just wasn't up maybe, to snuff. Maybe he was just defeated. Maybe, I don't know, maybe he was like, well, the show's gonna, the camera's gonna stop rolling in three seconds anyway, who gives a damn at this point? <laughs> There was that scene where I made a note of it where the camera cut to this guy who was just standing there and then he started walking and I was like, was it supposed to be implied he was walking the whole time and they just did a really bad cut? Like, what? Wait, when was this? Uh, was this earlier or later? Oh, it was in episode four. Uh, yeah. It's, it's the first note I made for episode four. Huh. I don't. I didn't notice that. Um. <laughs> but yeah, episode four starts with... Starts the doctor, right? Yeah. Well, they recap what happened at the end of yeah, three. But... Which they seem to do for this whole serial, and they recap way more than should be necessary. Like, at least specifically at the start of four, because they start all the way back when they got into the barn. Yeah. Or at least when the soldiers were coming out of the machine. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe, I guess, watching... I watched three and four back to back. Um, so I noticed it. Maybe if it was a week apart, maybe you'd be glad for something like that. I don't know. Um, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, but, um, so yeah, Jamie, not Jamie, the doctor and Zoe are walking around inside the machine thing and, uh, it's bigger on the inside. Hmm. <laughs> Suspicious. Uh, think s- you can very well guess who's going to show up in this serial at some point. Bigger on the inside. Name that doesn't have an actual name. I don't know. <clears throat> hey, just assumptions. <laughs> There's still five episodes left in the serial, so anything could happen. <clears throat> I mean, also the fact that the doctor recognizes the war chief and vice versa. <laughs> which we'll get to in like ten minutes. Still. Stop blatantly telegraphing it. <laughs> we're trying to build up suspense and we're not even done with this serial. Uh, <laughs> we never build up suspense. We always just end up spoiling it before it happens. Except the one time we actually did when, uh, what's his name? Victoria. Got out. Victoria got written out. <laughs> and we had to record that episode twice. Yeah, we did a better job of not telegraphing it in the first recording of that. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, they're, I guess, I think they're just walking around and they realize something odd is up. And then it cuts back to Jamie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um... And they get captured by some Union soldiers. Right, I think they're they have the Union soldiers come in after the firefight, or like the firefight mm-hmm. makes its way into the barn or something, 
and um, they get captured by some Union soldiers, yeah. And then some Confederate soldiers show up and free them, and then Bald Head Guy shows up. Did he have a name? Like, did he? Yeah, he did, but I don't know what it was. Um, yeah. I, 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 um, was, something uh, something German. Just von, Captain Von Weich, 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 W-E-I-C-K, so yeah, Weich. Weich. Viking. No, I don't know. <laughs> it's probably a Viking war in there somewhere. <laughs> probably. Uh, um, anyway, so he shows up. You find out he's also leading the the uh, Confederates. Now you really know something's up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the uh, bunch of soldiers die um, on both sides in a terribly choreographed fight scene. <laughs> and I realized... Um, Maybe I should have realized this sooner. It's blatantly obvious, but the main difference between this and something modern is that the fight scenes, or the main difference between the fight scenes we see in Classic Who, and obviously I haven't watched Modern Who, but just a modern show in general, is that these fights are pretty terribly choreographed. I mean, they're more realistic, sure. Yeah. But... The, I guess the, it was just harder to follow. Well, sometimes... I don't know if you noticed this, but sometimes it's just... If there's two people fighting, for example, it's just like an arm struggle between them for, like, ten seconds. Like in an unearthly child. Yeah, at least that one had the bongos off screen, though. <laughs> <clears throat> um, but yeah, a bunch of people end up dying, and, um, mm-hmm. and Jamie and Lady Jennifer are once again caught in the middle and captured. Meanwhile, the Doctor and Zoe are still wandering around, and Zoe makes the, uh, the point that it looks like they're in some sort of, uh, she says it looks like a university, but, and that it has, um, facilities like libraries, I think she says, mm-hmm. and like a, a meal room or something. And the doctor says, yeah, they must be, um, learning how to do something here or something along those lines. Yeah. And they find these weird glasses, goggle things, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> that I thought were pretty funny because the, uh, the eye holes are in the shape of pluses. <laughs> Did you notice that only the Doctor Zoe's and the professors were pluses, though? Everybody yeah. else's was, like, horizontal lines. Or there were some that were vertical lines. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that I, I just assumed there were variations of, of them. For symbolism. Nah, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> uh, um, so they put those on, uh, and I, I guess just because. And well, to blend in, because they realized that they they seem to just ignore the other people wearing those glasses, so they well, no, figure they, if they put them on, they'll just be ignored. They only realize that after they put them on because they walk by the the other people walk by with the with the glasses on, and Jamie's like, or Zoe, God, what am I saying? Zoe says, "Well, why didn't they notice us?" And the doctor mentions that it's probably because they too have the the goggles on. Yeah, it's, I don't know. So, well, um, they figured like out that. that 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 was why. So yeah. Anyway. So they they keep snooping around and they find some sort of seminar going on uh, where this scientist guy is demonstrating a... Um, a new and improved method. For D, what was the term they no, used? I said it before. Uh, conditioning. Yeah, deconditioning. No, for, for conditioning. For conditioning. It has a deconditioning setting that the doctor right. tries to figure out. Right, right, right. So um, they bring in... Their uh, test subject, and it turns out to be Carsters. So yep. they, uh, so the scientist makes a note that uh, currently he's aware of everything that's going on, isn't under any sort of mind control, and uh, isn't being affected by any sort of mist or anything, mm-hmm. and uh, that the machine is going to uh, condition him into believing or into uh, into believing he's a, he's a British soldier. Which Again. he is, which he is, but yeah, but back into just believing he's a soldier and not that there's this whole big thing going on right. where there's like people controlling and stuff. Right. So he conditions him, and then uh, so so uh, through some question and answer test things with Carsters, you find out that uh, once conditioned, he sees everything as he would. He sees everything in <clears throat> such a way that a person from his time would see mm-hmm. it. So he sees all the people in the room as other soldiers and he sees the scientist as, as his commander and when the scientist points out the machine he says he doesn't see anything so you find out that things that he can't possibly comprehend or that can't possibly be transferred into something from his own time he just doesn't see mm-hmm. and then 
that, I guess that explains why they couldn't see the projector thing in the wall yeah, before. Yeah, until the doctor and companions convinced them to. Well, according to the wiki, that tortoise like thing that the troops are transported in a, is called a Sidrat, which is just wow. TARDIS backwards. <laughs> what? Mm, when do we find that know. out? Either it's later or someone just made that up. Because <laughs> a TARDIS is an acronym, so I don't yeah. see why. Maybe Sidrat is also an acronym. <laughs> Space. In, uh, I don't know. <laughs> what? Space in dimensions. Relative, I don't know. Uh, anyway, Costas points out the Doctor and Zoe as German spies, and they're like, what? And the scientist is like, well, I guess there's still some kinks to work out with the system. <laughs> and then the Doctor points out that he didn't decondition Costas before recommission, reconditioning him, so maybe that's why he went insane. So the scientist <laughs> helps him and tells him how the de- de- deconditioning would work. Right, he shows him this control panel. And honestly, gotta say, that was the worst looking control panel I've ever seen on this show yet. It well, was it literally like... <laughs> just magnets. It looked like a smaller version of that big control panel you saw earlier when they were like controlling all the troop movements and stuff. I mean, that looked just as bad, but... I noticed it more here. Well, because it was on a smaller smaller scale, I guess. Um, I mean, yeah, they well, looked bad. Well, I mean, you're right. the thing that made me really notice this was um, the scientist... First shows the doctor the original configuration for when he's conditioning Mm -hmm. Carsters. And then he says, well, if you just rearrange it like this, and then it cuts away. But when it cuts back, all the uh, the little... It was obviously just magnets, but they were all in different positions. So that's when I realized, wow, they're just moving around geometric magnets. And it looked terrible. Uh, (laughs) um, But anyway. um, I guess they... Jamie, doesn't it? Yeah, but uh, I guess they used all their budget on the explosions in this serial again um but yeah it cuts back to jamie and uh harper comes in and rescues mm-hmm. them this guy this union soldier yeah um and, and his cohorts turns out he's part of a resistance movement of yeah. people who figure out something's up yeah so he doesn't exactly know what's going on but uh he does know that something is happening behind the scenes and he does know that he's not on earth anymore yeah, which I think this is the first. This is the first time I found I I realized that they're not on Earth because before this I thought they just connected all the different uh, yeah. time periods and zones, but it turns Makes out sense. they're actually in some other planet or some other plane mm-hmm. or some other dimension or something where they've connected all these places and the, and this is when I found out they're not actually in mm-hmm. the time periods. They're yeah. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, so they capture Von Reich. Um, and they end up not believing Jamie and Lady Jennifer that there was a machine that teleported into the building and brought the soldiers in. Yeah, they seem to think there's some sort of tunnel for some reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and Harper wants to kill Vike, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, I think Jamie convinces him not to. Yeah, this to is somehow. another one of those yeah, they weird cuts. Yeah. Like, where they just, they want to kill Harper and then they cut to the Doctor and Zoe and then when they cut back, Jamie's just like, Wow, they could have killed all of us, but I'm glad they decided to kill none of us. <laughs> I guess they either just couldn't think of a reason or a good way to have them convince Harper, or they just were something they needed to cut for time. Uh, I wasn't too bothered, but I, I noticed it. I definitely noticed that, but I wasn't too bothered by it. Um, I, mean, I guess I just rationalized it away as something like, hey, I guess they just needed to cut it, cut it for some reason. And then it, I... Yeah. I just rationalized that, hey, it probably would have been worse if they didn't cut it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, the Doctor <laughs> and Zoe, uh, the seminar has just ended, and they're leaving, and the Doctor's taking off his glasses for whatever reason. Well, I think he did it to uh, closer examine the uh, yeah. control panel. Uh, and so the War Chief comes in. Must be pretty hard to see in. through those. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The yeah. War Chief comes in, and he recognizes the Doctor, and the Doctor recognizes the War Chief, and then the Doctor's like... Oh no, Zoe, run! <laughs> and then the, the war chief's like, like capture you, them! You fool! Or something like that to the scientist. Uh, <laughs> so, somehow the doctor and Zoe get away through that entire crowd of people that were just standing in front of the door. Yeah. <laughs> Way better reflexes than anyone else. Um, so yeah, they're running through the... Um, facility i guess they somehow get separated and zoe runs into carsters and she's like oh thank goodness carsters it's you somehow forgetting that he's been conditioned 
And he's like, you're a German spy. It's my duty to kill you. He pulls out his gun and pulls the trigger. Almost. He pulls it enough to... <laughs> to move the barrel it. or something or uh, some, something like it. that. Cock it's it. A, it's a double action pistol. Yeah, I don't know anything about guns. <laughs> well, basically it means that you can either cock it by manually pulling it back or the trigger will cock it and fire. Oh, uh, okay. Well, it's quicker It's quicker to... If you cock it back, it the, pulling the trigger is a quicker fire. But if you don't have time to pull the... Well, yeah, because if you just pull the trigger without yeah. doing it, it has to turn the yeah. thingamajig. <clears throat> I guess. That's what I assume. Uh, yeah. Now you learned. Now you know. <laughs> and learning is half the... Ba- no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so episode five starts with the scientist having a gun on Carstairs being like, what are you doing, Carstairs? Can't have you be killing off these people now. Precious spies that we can interrogate or somehow say something is like, like that. But she's a German spy and he pulls the trigger all the way and nothing happens. It turns out the gun's not loaded. Yeah. <laughs> False alarm, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so Zoe gets captured and she starts being interrogated. They think she's part of the resistance movement. Mm-hmm. Um, she's um, So she's shown uh, the guy who's interrogating her has this <laughs> giant headset thing um which reminds me of those uh i don't know if you've ever used one of these but it's there are these uh, i think they were really popular in like the 80s probably uh these toys that like it's like a viewfinder yeah. type thing yeah you put in the little circular thing and you can like click and like change the scene yeah yeah <laughs> it still have like one a, of those <laughs> it looked like a giant one of those except it only had one I thing at the end and yeah it was called the truth beam you find out later really I didn't yeah we like the truth something because when um when the war chief comes into Oscar the interrogation yeah the truth machine I think he said or something like that yeah something like that uh well, it was he didn't tell the war chief I remember making a note about why doesn't he tell the war chief but he told a uh, scientist yeah um but yeah she's oh yeah right at the end of episode five I remember now yeah so yeah uh puts her under a mind control-ish type thing where she can only tell the truth and he keeps asking her where she's from or like what when she joined the resistance and obviously she didn't so she's telling the truth that she doesn't know or she's just like no I'm, I'm not in the resistance yeah and they mentioned they don't have any 21st century war zones in the compound I guess that's well, the writers explaining away the fact they don't know if there's going to be any wars in the 21st century <laughs> so it's best not to try and predict if there will be <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, no, but she only says that once he realizes, like, hey, she might not be part of the resistance. Where she, mm-hmm. where she from? Um, so then, so then they realize that, like, hey, something weird is happening. Why is there someone from the twenty first century here? Um, yeah. So, but uh, and also, they um, sh- so she mentions that uh, she's with the doctor, and the guy's like, "Who's that?" So he decides to uh, show her. He decides to beam her these images of different people in the resistance, or I guess just people who were suspicious or like realize what's going on. Right. Um, and wants her to point out which one of, or wants her to point out anyone she recognizes. So, um, meanwhile, the doctor has made it back to uh, <clears throat> the scientist. <laughs> There's definitely a communication breakdown in this base because the scientist decides it's just okay to have the doctor help him still. Even though he was totally in the room when the war chief was like, stop that man. Well, uh, there's not really too much trust in b- between the war chief and some of the others. Yeah, which they only really like bring up in episode five. Later. And they really yeah. b- like play it up once they find out the Doctor's time and space travel, which we'll get to <clears> in a second. And I keep saying that. <laughs> That's the third time I've said this. <laughs> um, so yeah, he confronts the scientist and the scientist is like, wait, aren't you that person we're supposed to capture and he's like what me no it was just the girl and he's like well why did you run after and he's like well i was trying to get her of course and then i was i was kind of i wouldn't have believed the doctor if i was a scientist if only for the reason that he yelled run zoe when they started running exactly (laughs) so (laughs) i don't know maybe the scientist is secretly in allegiance with the rebel no 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 well, I mean, they definitely play up the fact that, like, at least in the end of episode five, the fact that, that there's different they factions don't, that they don't trust the war chief. Yeah, they do. But like, I don't know. I just felt the scientist was oblivious here. He might have been because then he was like, "Yeah, we're just gonna decondition him, like you suggested." So he does that, <laughs> and they just 
put the scientist in Carsters, the machine. Carsters, by the yeah, way. Carsters. Yeah, Carsters. And they put the scientist in the machine, and the doctor's like, better leave him on low simmer. Whatever well, that well, means. Well, no, the, um, first they're about to decondition Carsters. Yeah. Which they do, and then the, the scientist tells the doctor to tie the knot so he doesn't escape as soon as he's deconditioned. So the doctor pretends to do so, and then when Carsters gets deconditioned, he gets up and they get yeah. the scientist in the machine. <laughs> and Sorry, so, I just felt there needed to be no, more yeah, depth. No. Um, so, so they, they make a break to go for it. Zoe. And they do. They overpower wow. the <laughs> they Well, over- we should mention that the war chief came in at some point and asked about Zoe. And the interviewer lies about what Zoe said. He just says, oh, she's just another resistance member. Right. I guess he doesn't want to know. He doesn't want the war chief to know yeah. what's going on. Um, either to usurp his power at some point or maybe uh, possibly out of fear for being incompetent. Right. Who well, knows you, at this point? Well, well you, find you out, do find out. Yeah. Well, we'll get there. <laughs> uh, so anyway, back to Zoe and Lady Jennifer. Uh, Jamie and Lady Jennifer. <laughs> see? See? <laughs> <sighs> They're um, the commanding officer of the American Civil War rebel group, I guess, shows up. And he's like, um, he's trying to also figure out where the troops are coming from. And they, uh, Jamie, Jamie, yeah. Yeah, Jamie tells him that they're coming out of the the machine thing, and he doesn't really believe it. Mm -hmm. Um. And they catch Von Vyke looking into a, like, video monitor. Yeah, the same type of thing that, uh, Smythe had in his office. Like, why would you have one of those in just some random barn in the middle of nowhere? Well, the barn was where they were deploying the soldiers, so it kind of made sense. I guess. Um, but he accident he activates some sort of like distress beacon, and he won't tell them what it is. And he's like, "You'll just you'll find out." <laughs> Although in like a southern accent, um, what happens next? <laughs> oh, so they, at the base they're like, "Hey, the distress beacon's been activated. We should send some soldiers." And so they they do, and and that's when the doctor and uh yeah so Carsters. They- you take the chance to rescue Zoe. Yeah. And then they end up following the soldiers to the la- launching bay because they're like, well, we should get a machine and then we can go like we can go get Jamie and Lady Jennifer. Yeah. And, and meanwhile, while all this is happening, uh, you find out that uh, the interrogators confided in the scientist and they're mm-hmm. they're sort of going behind the war chief's back. Yeah, because or, did you mention that? I don't no. Know. OK, because um, Zoe mentioned that they came there in the TARDIS which can travel through space and time. And then the interrogator is telling the scientist this, and the scientist is like, but only the war chief's people have control over time and space. Right. How, like, how can the doctor have control over time and space? And the interviewer is like, I don't know. We need to find out. Like, So, yeah, you, I, I kind of assume that they want to probably usurp power from the war chief by, by getting the TARDIS or finding out how the doctor has control over time or whatever they're planning to do right which is the first time that i guess i realized that there are two different races i guess so to speak in that base there was the war chief and then everyone else yeah which they do say the war chief isn't one of them yeah which <clears throat> only was brought up in episode five and i was like oh wow because i thought the war chief and the the base people were like the same race yeah and they were like all running some big experiment or something yeah well the scientist um wonders if the war chief had betrayed them and the interrogator says, well, he did betray his own race. So right. I wouldn't put it past him, which I mean, so you, might so, explain hmm. why the doctor recognizes the war chief. Maybe <laughs> I'm just speculating. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm not going to say anything on that. <laughs> what? It's a reasonable assumption. Yeah, it is, but it's, I'm there's, just not going to say any more on that. There's evidence. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, like we were saying, the doctor, uh, Zoe, and Carstairs decide to uh, go use one of the machines so they can go back and get uh, Jamie and Lady Jennifer. But then uh, the machine, uh, well, back in uh, Civil War era zone, uh, the machine is materialized and they've dealt with the soldiers or whatever and... Jamie decides... They kill Harper, we should mention. Right, they kill Harper. <laughs> Jamie and uh, everyone else decides to go into the machine just to see what's up and to possibly meet up back with the doctor. Mm-hmm. Lady Jennifer doesn't go because she's a doctor and she's needed somewhere with injured soldiers, so she doesn't go. 
But Jamie walks into the machine, and on the other side, the doctor and everyone else see that they've set up an ambush. You're right. And as soon as Jamie and the other American resistance soldiers walk through, they're immediately shot. But That's not where... necessarily killed no, like not, you yeah. like to try. <clears throat> well, they were the Harper was shot with the same type of gun that they were shot with, and he died. So that's why I assume the three soldiers they were with died, or that Jamie was with died. Jamie's also shot. We don't know if he's dead. Well, I he mean, might be. They're probably dead, but we usually only put people on the death count when we find out they're dead for sure. So, yeah. I mean, even I mean, if I they do on, so die, then we we'll put them on the death count, like in episode six, yeah, when we find out yeah, they die. Yeah, of course. So, yeah. I mean, for now, I guess the suspense is like, did Jamie die? Yeah. Are they all dead? And I mean, I don't know. Maybe this is how Jamie gets written out. That would be... That would suck. <laughs> that would suck, but it would be a big shock. I mean, it definitely has that shock factor. Like, wow, the longest running companion just goes out like that. And honestly, the doctor would probably have a breakdown if that happened. He would probably just give up. He would just give in. Like, honestly, if Jamie got written out or right like now... Or go on dying, a rampage. <laughs> I don't think that's in the doctor's character, though. I think mm. he cares too much about his companions that... Like, he would be like, I, I failed to protect him. Like, I took him out of his time, and now he's dead because of me. Yeah, probably. And you'd probably just be like, do what yeah, you want with me. Yeah, you're probably right. Like, there's no reason I need, I need to live anymore. Well, probably not that extreme, but he would be like, <laughs> it's just... He'd be distraught. Yeah. Um, Zoe, too, because Zoe and Jamie have grown pretty close in the, like, seven serials they've been in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rest in peace, Jamie. <laughs> We'll find out if he's actually dead when we watch the next five episodes, I guess. And, I mean, I really hope he's not. Yeah, uh, no. Yeah, I, I hope he's yeah. not. <laughs> no, I hope he is. No. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's dead. I hated Jamie this whole time. No, 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 no. No, I didn't. No, Jamie was cool. That's Jamie. Um, Jamie wait, deserves to have a good ride out. Yeah, he does. If any companion does, it's Jamie. Right. <laughs> Jamie is like contender for favorite character on the show. With Second Doctor, for me. Yeah, I mean, I have favorites in the reboot, obviously, but, like, for Classic Who, I, I would agree. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, like... I'd probably put the Second Doctor first, just slightly above Jamie. Yeah, Jamie's kind of usurped Ian as my favorite companion now. Yeah, and we should probably do this when Jamie gets written yeah. out. Or, yeah, <laughs> instead I mean, of yeah, now. But, uh, I mean, we're already an hour into this podcast, so... Yeah, um... Yeah, so this was a pretty strong start to this. Uh, like I was saying before, I like how it wasn't just a giant info dump at one point. It was, uh, it kind of was, I guess, with the whole deconditioning, reconditioning thing. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that was just more explaining a singular plot point in a in a way that actually did... Ex well, how do I put this? That... They, just, they basically explained that one plot point, but it just took a while because there was a lot that needed to be explained. Yeah, um, they... They explained, like, little pieces at a time. Yeah. I mean, well, until you got to the deconditioning thing. Right, well, and then... I guess it's... I guess, yeah, that is... I guess that is a little piece of what's going on, but it's just... I mean, we still don't know... It takes a lot to explain. We still don't know why they're putting on these... I guess yeah. they're war games, I suppose, is w yeah. what the name of the serial comes from. Yeah, um, we, we still... I mean, we know something's going on at this point, and we, we know more than, yeah. like, say, in episode two. Like, in episode two, you know something's going on. Now you know more of, like, the quote-unquote politics behind it and how it's, like, being orchestrated and how they're controlling everyone. But we still don't know the purpose behind it all, which I like. And we forgot, like, an important scene for this where um, both Smythe and Von Vike are in the control room and they're talking about their war strategies and they're <clears> both <throat> talking about what they're going to do to decrease the other person's morale. And which kind of is, brings up the point, like, so if they both know what the other person's going to do, like, why are they even doing the whole thing like yeah, what I mean, is what is going on here yeah i mean i thought it was kind of like you know maybe I, I would equate it to like maybe a game of risk where like you're sitting around playing it with obviously people in the same room usually and uh mm -hmm. and like you might you, you might be uh prompted to maybe give away part of your strategy to sort of brag to someone or like one of your friends or whatever uh Mm -hmm. because it's not i mean it's just a game it's not really that important you don't need to win right so you know maybe they just see this all as a game as the title would imply i mean and they're just using yeah. everyone's pawns 
We don't know uh, where we are either. We don't know. Yeah. We, we know we're not on Earth, but we don't know where not on Earth. Yeah, I don't know if this is supposed to be like another planet or like another dimension, possibly. Something like that. We don't uh, know who the war chief is, although I think there's been heav- heavy... You heavily implied it. There's been heavy... <laughs> Not that I know. I just I've just seen his name before. <laughs> I think, but it's I think I, it's heavily implied he's supposed to be of the Doctor's own race. Come Which on. heavily implies you can't disagree with that. You have to agree. It's been heavily implied that that's yeah, I do. That that's what it is. <laughs> um. But uh-huh. yeah, I mean, the serial basically does a good job of. Of not revealing all of what's going on too early, which I feel some other serials are guilty of doing, where they reveal what's going on, and then the rest of it is, yeah, it's interesting, but it's sort of, it's almost like falling action. I don't know if that's the right term. I know there's rising action, but it's almost like the falling action. Like you, you know, mm-hmm. like the big reveal already happened, and and that was it. Like now you find out what happens after that. Now you know what actions the characters take, but. I don't know. It's well, just I mean, less suspenseful. I think you can have a good serial that has a big info dump at the beginning. Like, you can have a good serial that does that if certain characters are left in the dark, and then but the audience is told everything. Yeah. So I mean, instead of having the audience guess, the audience is kind of watching the main characters guess. Yeah, and I mean, if it's a if it's a if it's a premise that needs to be set up, like what comes to mind is the savages. Like mm-hmm. that, they set that up, and that was that was. They they set up the the setting, mm-hmm. obviously, which uh, they still kept. They still kept some secrets, obviously, that, that need to be revealed later. But it's not like they just threw you right in there. Um, and that ended up being a, an, an enjoyable serial. Yeah. <clears throat> um. But yeah, I like how this is handled because I mean, halfway in, we're still. Uh, it's kind of like the faceless ones, where like you know something's something huge is going on, but you don't exactly know what until later. Um. But yeah, um, um, yeah, we also didn't mention the uh, the scene where the, uh, I don't know who he was talking to, but it was the war chief and someone, and he mentions that necklace he has on. Oh, Do you he remember was talking, who he was talking to? Uh, uh, he was talking to um, the guy, the interviewer, because I guess he was uh, also head of security, because he's like, uh, this is all your fault that they've escaped. Yeah. And so and they, like, without my, without the knowledge that I have, you wouldn't be anywhere or something like that. Yeah, he basically... Uh, reminds the interrogator that this is all his it, it's it's basically all his not doing but it's 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 basically out of anyone else's hands but his I don't know, mm-hmm. and it's put pretty badly but yeah apparently you find out his necklace is pretty special i don't know it kind of looked like it had a celtic or almost scottish design on it Did i was always thinking that? like I, I was thinking it was almost like hindu in design like possibly like an indian I, character Maybe it was basically just a non-Latin alphabet character. I guess we could generalize it to that. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't see it as a letter. I don't know. I saw it more as like those Celtic designs you see sometimes. Who knows though? It's probably just some random shape someone came up with. <laughs> the, the costume department. Yeah. Hey, we need a cool shape for his necklace. <laughs> I. <laughs> um, speaking of costumes, this they didn't really have to. Well, this well, at least the costumes in this serial didn't look super low budget because they were actually like mm-hmm. costumes that have already existed on Earth. Yeah. So <laughs> we didn't get like the Dominators or the Crotons. Uh, <laughs> hey, you can have low budget looking costumes that look okay. But you can I also. I mean, let's be honest; those oh. costumes would have looked even more worse if it was in color. Oh yeah, as is evidenced by uh, the mind robber. Speaking of color, this serial had a weird fixation on always mentioning the color of things. Like Jamie specifically mentions the troop carrying transports are green like yeah. five times. Yeah, maybe they were just super obsessed with color television at that point. I don't know. Maybe or maybe like... they're leading into the fact that they're about to go color. Maybe and they're kind of like they want to slowly introduce it. I don't know why they'd want to slowly introduce it since it's, it's not really like something you need to slowly introduce. Cause honestly, obviously I don't know how it was back then, but it's mm-hmm. not like, I don't think it's something I'd be super affected by. I just be like, okay, it's in color. Now it's just another show transitioning yeah. to color or another program transitioning to color. Um, uh, and I, yeah. I'd say this is the first year I explicitly noticed them pointing out the colors of objects. 
they have a few times in the past right. where, where once or twice where we've noticed it because the show is black <clears throat> and white. So we're like, hey, I didn't know that that was that color. Because I don't know about you, but while I'm watching it, I kind of I I just assume things are certain colors. It's not like I think, okay, which color do I think that is? I'm just like, okay, that's that's that color. Like I see it in a certain way in my mind. I mean, it's yeah, I know a, the colors. Are just I just watch it as a black and white show though. Like I don't okay. imagine like. Well, that's blue, and that's brown, and that's white. I just like, well, it's black and white, so I'm just going to enjoy it for what it is. Yeah, I mean, I don't like, I don't specifically look at the show and say, like, okay, um, this is that certain color, this is that certain color. But, I don't know, I definitely, like, in my mind's eye, I definitely see something, like, I definitely assume things are certain colors, obviously. But like, even when Jamie pointed out that transport was green, like, I didn't see it as green. I just saw it as, like, a shade of gray like everything else was. <laughs> Fifty shades? No. No! <laughs> this is a family-friendly show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. I was going to make a snarky comment about that, but no, I don't. No. Wow. Probably not in the best idea. Um... Yeah, so next week, I guess we're going to be watching the final five episodes of The Second Doctor. and Yeah, I'm pretty sad to see him go. I have I don't know if I should mention this now, but I will anyway. <laughs> uh, but The First Doctor, nearing the end of his run, yeah, I was sad to see him go. But at the same time, I was ready for something new. But with The Second Doctor, I kind of wish he was he would still stick around for a little bit longer. I mean... I think it's because The Second Doctor... Bring something new, like every episode, kind, every serial kind of thing. You find out something new, like every serial. Yeah. The first Doctor, that since it was a whole bunch of historical serials, and they were more focused on. I mean, not that that was a bad thing. That's what they went for, and that's they rolled with it. But, yeah. You know, they were more focused on like getting out historical information rather than developing the character, so to speak. I guess, and yeah, the the second Doctor. I mean, overall, is just a more interesting character because of that, mm-hmm. because they introduce you know new things about him every serial and. uh keep him interesting some in some different way every serial whether it's like introducing a new gadget or uh putting him in well he's been in a lot of he's been in a, a wider variety of situations than the first doctor yeah to say the least because during the first doctor's run we mentioned this too it was it was usually just it was, it was pretty formulaic in in the way th- things were handled like uh with how do i put this with with them coming into contact with a, a, a warring group of alien races or something like that, mm. and usually ending up on the quote unquote correct side or the side they mm. uh, end up siding with first, and you know just yeah. having it play out from there. Obviously with differences, but <clears throat> and maybe the lack of development for the first Doctor's character can be chalked up to his whole run was basically the end of his life. I mean, we find out as soon as the second Doctor appears that he has a four hundred fifty year old diary implying basically the first Doctor was 450 years old when he died. Yeah. And we only saw, like, maybe 25 years of travels. Like, even if you wanted to be really, really lenient on his well, timeline for travels. Well, I mean, it's time travels. So it's kind of hard to put that into perspective. Right. But, I mean, like, we only saw maybe, like, 25 or even 10 years of his life. And the first Doctor lived for 450 years if that diary is to be believed. You know? No, he just falsified everything. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, I mean... And whereas the second Doctor was kind of new, so he had to, you know, develop. (laughs) Yeah, I guess. Um, but yeah, I I kind of, I do kind of wish there there was some more to the second Doctor or another season or half a season with him. There's always audio dramas. Yeah. (laughs) And next week we could mention the season 6B theory. Well, I can mention it now. I don't even know what that is. Well, I guess I'll just touch on it now, since I mean... Next week's already going to be a pretty long serial, but yeah. basically, well, you know how the second Doctor appears in a serial in the Six Doctors run called The Two Doctors, right? Yeah. And he appears with just Jamie, and there was no point in the Doctor's timeline where the Doctor and Jamie traveled alone. They always either traveled with Victoria or Zoe. So the the theory is... Whoa. Well, what it can't, about it, between... It, you can't do be- between Ben and Polly because the face yeah, is yeah, one yeah, transition know, straight but... into... What about between Victoria and Zoe? No, because it, it, it transitions straight into it because Jamie mentions, like, why did we have to leave her there, Doctor? Um, Which is the line that's at the end of Fury from the Deep and also the first line of Wheel in Space, so... Maybe he, just, <laughs> maybe he was talking about another companion <laughs> that happened between those. <laughs> but anyway, so the theory goes that 
bet- between the end of season six and the beginning of season seven, the second Doctor went on travels with just Jamie before regenerating, which I don't know because I haven't seen his regeneration, so I don't know how that fits in. But I just know that that's a theory that also is supported by some other outside elements. Some outside, other outside stories imply that that happened. Um. Yeah, I mean, we can we can bring that up whether we think it's viable next week mm-hmm. um, when we see how the second Doctor regenerates and right. stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, last week I mentioned, and 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 the, previously in this episode I also mentioned I wanted to talk more in depth about what makes a good or bad serial. This episode is getting pretty long. I don't know if I should do that yeah, now. Yeah, why not? Okay, this is gonna so, be our longest episode. Yeah. I can tell <laughs> our longest before was the first Doctor. <laughs> Right out, which was yeah. an hour 15, which we just paused, by the way. <laughs> yeah, records. Um, and we still have another half of this episode to yeah. watch, the serial. Imagine if we watched all ten this week. Jeez. <laughs> um, oh, jeez. Uh, well, I just put... My main point that I had here was a lot of it comes down to whether a serial was artificially shortened or lengthened. Because I was reading a lot about uh, season six and its... Uh, pretty haphazard construction behind the scenes, how they uh, rearrange... We've talked about this slightly before, too. They've re- they rearranged a bunch of serials, changed the length of serials, cut mm. and added different serials right. all over the place, and it was, it was pretty chaotic if, if you uh, read about it. And uh, we can put up the uh, Shannon Sullivan site pro- pro- yeah. probably on the uh, site as a link, so in case anyone wants to read that, because yeah. it's a pretty good site for production information. Um so yeah, I put I put uh, that as as like one of the main points because, like the Space Pirates are, was originally envisioned as a four episode serial, like we were talking about mm-hmm. last week, and it was lengthened to six, and that might be part of the reason why it was pretty bad. Um, I also put like um, the serial specific characters. I referred to them as serial characters as I was writing it because I didn't know how else to refer to them. <laughs> But a lot of the times, I feel like they're just plot devices rather than actually being fleshed out. Like, this right. serial specifically does a good job of it with characters like uh, Lady Jennifer and um, Carsters. God, I can never remember his name for some reason. But, like, Jennifer, with her decision, like, she's not a major character. I mean, she's not, like, a, a doc. She's not, yeah, obviously she's not the doctor. She's not, like, mm-hmm. a companion or, like, one of the main characters. But she still has to make, like, important decisions that develop her character. Like, whether she's going to go with Jamie into the machine or whether she's going to go help the wounded soldiers. Like, she's a right. doctor, so that's something that you'd uh, understand. Like, okay, she has to make that decision. And she eventually ends up helping the wounded soldiers. So that kind of develops her character. Even though she's not going to be around too long, which is pretty nice. And, uh... You know, it ultimately ultimately comes down to okay, what is this serial plot driven or character driven? Not that plot driven solely is bad, right. but um, but you know, character driven in my opinion usually ends up being more interesting because if the characters are, are well written, then the plot, even if it's not as plot intensive or even if there's less points you have to follow, it'd still be enjoyable to watch these characters doing different things. Right. Um. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, obviously I put like okay, maybe if it's more plot driven that yeah, plot driven it should be more doctor centric i felt that might make sense because mm-hmm. because of what i was saying before it might not have enough time to flesh out the characters or that might not just not be part of the story and um yeah i put like don't 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 have the entire story like revolve around uh, uh, don't have backstory come into it too much. Like the space pirates did a poor job with this. Like it was all centered on that backstory. Mm-hmm. And it just wasn't very interesting. And like they keep bringing it up, but massacre was just all focused on the political mumbo jumbo slash backstory that happened with that. And uh, I, f- I feel like serials that, and this isn't hard sci-fi, obviously. So serials that go into like sort of massacre territory with the sci-fi stuff might not be as good. We haven't really had that. Mm-hmm. I was just, I was just envisioning like, okay, I was thinking, what if Massacre wasn't a historical serial? What if it was more of a sci-fi serial? And they went into all that detail about a fictional, like fictional politics or I, or fictional technology. I still feel like it wouldn't have been it all that great. It still probably would have been, yeah. Yeah. I so I don't know. I kind of wanted to differentiate between like, okay, was this bad because it was just part, just literally an uninteresting 
history straight out of the textbook or was it bad because mm-hmm. of how it handled the story? <laughs> I guess it's both. Yeah. It's it kind of just comes down to a lot. Uh, uh, I think what you were saying can just basically be generalized to a lot of if a serial is good or bad comes down to what happens in its production stages. So <laughs> yeah. it's a lot, it's mean, a lot of uh, what has to do with it. That's the, if I want to shorten your whole point to like one sentence, that would be it. Because um, <laughs> I mean, like where to set the serial, how long the serial is going to be. You know who the serial specific character is going to be is all kind of in the production slash writing stages, and I mean even things like if the if the character is uninteresting, um, like it's partially the fault of the writer, but it's also still partially the fault of the script editor to, to not point this out to the writer. I mean, plus you know maybe there's just not enough time to rewrite the serial to make yeah. something different. And, and and with what I've read of with uh, season six, like behind the scenes. They probably knew some of these serials weren't as good as others, but they just had to get them in there for the sake of, okay, we got renewed for another mm-hmm. season, and it has to be 45 episodes, so you're just going to have to put this right. in. It was the best of what they had, I guess. I mean, at some point, you, it just comes down to, like, <clears throat> we can either put out this subpar serial, or we can put out, like, nothing. Because and we, probably get cause, fired. Because we don't have, because <laughs> we just don't have time to make, to write another one and to rewrite it. Yeah. Or, or they may be just, they have a choice of two subpar serials and they, they put out the better one, even though it's yeah. not necessarily a good serial. It was kind of the best of two yeah. evils type thing. I mean, I assume the BBC is like, okay, you need to put out something or you're right. out of here. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> I mean, and maybe that plays into why the seasons get shorter after season six. I mean, season seven is only four serials. Yeah, maybe they realized, okay, we'd like rather 25 have... episodes. Yeah, maybe they realized, all right, we'd rather have less serials and just choose the ones that are enjoyable rather than <laughs> have more, renew it for more and... and throw in all these subpar or mediocre serials i mean they basically cut, cut the length of the seasons in half we, we dropped to 25 episodes yeah. next season or it could be just four terrible serials we don't know yet <laughs> third doctor's first serial isn't so bad so far i'm just gonna be glad it's in color that's all i have to say like i'm ready for color <laughs> and yeah. the brigadier i'm Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, no, he's back Lethbridge in the, the third Doctor's first episode, which we'll talk about when we get there, but I think that was a good choice. So, yeah, production things. We'll wrap up, I guess, this discussion next week. Um, a lot of what we're God. talking about, if this serial is good or not, will also depend on whether or not the final five episodes end up playing well. I mean, this happened with Dalek Master Plan. The first six episodes were pretty good, and then they threw in the Christmas special, and then the whole plot <laughs> kind of just fell to pieces after that. Yeah, they they salvaged it. In the end, like, yeah, I guess. In the end. We'll see how this plays out, though. We'll speak more on that next week when we've right. watched it. So, uh, yeah, we'll uh, do that next week. Email us at thedoctordecadentvegetable.com. Questions, comments, concerns, angry rants. Who knows what? <laughs> we're thinking of putting out a year yearly episode, a uh, year celebration episode next Saturday. Probably won't yeah, be we're, too we're long. We're switching to yearly format, guys. We, <laughs> no, no, no. no that, that'd be really bad. We'd be here for a long time. <laughs> uh, no, kind of just a celebration for having the podcast run for a year. <clears throat> uh, we kind of have an idea of what we want to do with that. Um, but if you have any like ideas... everything else, we'll just wing it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this, like we said last week, this isn't really that serious of a show. <laughs> uh, but if you have any ideas for that or any suggestions or, you know, things just about Doctor Who in general you want us to answer, it doesn't have to be about any specific serial, um, now would be a good time to email us that. Because um, yep. that would help us out for the year special because we've been flip-flopping for like three months on if we want to do it or not and what we're going to do. Uh, but that'll go out Don't on Saturday. Don't reveal how incompetent we are. <laughs> you did that like a week ago. <laughs> but don't do it anymore. <laughs> Um, Don't do it that'll go out on Saturday, uh, probably the day before the next episode, because that'll be a year to the day as our first episode. So yep. look for that. Um, may or may not go. It'll be titled Special Two, probably. Yeah. And uh, check us out on YouTube at Trust Your Doctor, and check us out on iTunes at Trust Your Doctor. Leave a rating if you liked it. Even if you didn't like it, leave <laughs> a bad rating because any any criticism helps. Yeah, I'm uh, check it out on Facebook. Uh, like us on Facebook. Interesting facts weekly about the serial stuff you might not have known, stuff we didn't mention in the episode. And uh, next week we finish up the final five episodes of the Second Doctor in the second half of uh, the War Games. So, till then, the end. Yeah.